We do have the Deputy Governor joining us this morning, His Excellency Philip Schreiber. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program today. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Well, yesterday we also did hear you speak about these primaries uh, in some, at some point. So now talk to us about this. Um, you say that you are the candidate to emerge from another primary. And that was the basis upon which, you know, you spoke to journalists. So could you tell us, how is that? What actually happened? Because many thought that the primaries that was irrelevant, I mean, that was observed by INEC, was the one that was televised. Uh, so how could you explain you saying you emerged as the candidate of another primary? Yeah, thank you once again. Uh, I'm not saying I emerged. I won the election. And uh, why, how did I win the election? The authentic delegates that are uh, elected to put uh, the governorship as voted committee uh, as the PDP uh, candidates. So that's what has happened. I didn't uh, uh, declare myself winner of an election. Delegate voted for me. And if you have to look at what happened in some of the that is cosmetic uh, uh, primaries. You cannot carry permanent circumstances. Uh, uh, it's personal aids it's to a uh, venue and say, come on, vote an aspirant. That was what happened to the so, side. Uh, how did you come to the conclusion that those who were uh, said to be delegates who voted in that primary? were personal aides? Yeah, because the authentic delegates are those that were elected during the adult delegate uh, election. Uh, and we fought of uh, this. Uh, so those ones voted for me yesterday. They were disenfranchised because they were not going to vote for the governor's prepared candidate. So uh, they decided to hold their primaries and they voted. So at what point did those delegates who participated in the primary which you said you won. When did that uh, uh, delegate election hold? Yesterday. It held yesterday morning or to the afternoon. Uh, your media men were there, and I'm sure they will have given you the reports of how it all started from when they were not accredited at the Mackay Center at the media room, and they protested. And after all the protests, they insisted that uh, people have to represent them in some of the And they said, no, nobody can represent them. They are the authentic delegate and they must vote. Oh, sorry. Uh, so you Please cannot, explain you again. Cannot, are you saying that the delegate election held yesterday afternoon and then the primaries also held yesterday? No, no, no. The oh, primaries okay. held yesterday. The delegate election was uh, on, the 4th, yeah, on the 4th of February. Uh, yeah, on the 4th of February, that was a delegate election that produced these delegates that elected us, me and particularly yesterday. So if that process which you participated in was the valid one, we also do remember that about nine of you at the time had protested and issued a statement disagreeing with the processes that were leading to that election. So if this the one you participated in was the right one. How come we also di we didn't see Ansley Mojezwa there, but we saw him in the one that was televised? Yeah, uh, yesterday, uh, we actually, from day one, an assistant told that the process of the primaries was faulty. And we went to the appeal panel, and you heard it very loud. The governor and others said, oh, the primaries held and everything. And we insisted that the process not followed. Yesterday, a group of delegates came out and said, we won that primary you are, you are talking about. I mean, that delegate election you are talking about. And this is our names. And this is our results. And our name is there. You must accredit us. And they said no. And these guys got angry and said no. You cannot replace us with other people. We are the authentic delegates, and we must vote. And they voted yesterday, and they voted for me. So, is the confusion? You say when there's 
leadership failure. That is what you get. We have serious gaps as far as leadership is concerned. And that is why this confusion. And I can bet you that I am not a desperate person. And so I will not be desperate to be governor of most if my people are not insisting. Those delegates insisted that they must have their election yesterday. They had their election. They put it for me. Uh, Chimbley, going forward, you, there are a lot of things I will not be able to speak to you because there are a lot of speciality. Because most of these things will be hot and I will not go and reveal a lot. Get there. Okay. So if they were aggrieved, they wanted to participate in the process that was televised, but they didn't allow them. Then they came and then held these other ones. And you said they are the valid delegates. Who were the officials that conducted that one? Yeah, part of the officials that were sent by the national to conduct yesterday election, they're the one that And those that declared me winner are part of this uh, came for the election. And those who insisted that, no, I cannot be a rubber stamp, I cannot be a committee that will purchase to go and endorse an election that they know is cosmetic. So they, uh, there's a committee that was set up by the national. So part of the committee went on the other side. The other one came to the, the authentic uh, primaries, which produced me. So it was not state functionary that, uh, that declared me. Those that were sent by the national the, the winner, they conducted the primary and the winner. Okay, so I, I'm just trying to, you know, understand the dynamics of how this works. Uh, you have said that the, uh, the candidates, or beg your pardon, the, the people who emerged from the Congresses, who won, the delegates who emerged from the Congresses, went to the venue, uh, the decided venue of where these primaries were supposed to take place and were prevented. They were not accredited and they got angry and they left. That's what you've said. So I'm wondering whether the venue and, you know, the officials and the official dom surrounding a particular area isn't important in all of this. I think it is this court that will, I don't want to really go into things I know uh, will be going to court. It's the court and the party uh, appeal panel that will be determining because uh, you cannot ask that first, those that uh, 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 sent the circular for the process of the election yesterday, the National Organizing Secretary of the state does not have the right to do that. It's not in his power to It's not in his power to organize that the national that organizes the uh, uh, governorship primaries. So, at the issue, all of the organizations were fought against the rules and regulation of the party. So, if everything that took place yesterday was organized by the state arm um, of uh, PDP. And that contradicts our agreement at the stakeholders meeting in Wadata Plaza and that also contradicts our constitution that says it is the national that organizes the election. And we have told the national, you cannot wield your right to the state because the state is partisan. The government is supporting Aguswell Godaro, the state chairman of the party is supporting Aguswell Godaro, and they have made statements and they've gone campaigning and they've funded. So you cannot wield your right to a partisan person, somebody that's taking side. That We've been saying all the while. And the organizing secretary was the one, state organizing secretary, Tony Anini Jr., was the one. I have the circular I sent to us. And I said, no, you don't have the right to do this. It is a national. So the national officials are the ones that are given the right by the constitution of PDP to organize governorship primaries. And this national executive that was that were appointed by nationals took part from the beginning to the end of the primaries that uh, this year. And I can, the, 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 the delegate protested, protested yesterday, protested, and nobody heard them. And they protested even to my house, and I told them I was going to reach out to the leadership of uh, 
uh, that was set up by the national. I did reach out to them. And it was obvious that some of them were compromised. And those that were not compromised said, look, we will not go with these people. And we'll get back. And I was told that, look, the primaries were going to be taking place. And I went and I was elected. I did authentic. What is key is that who are those that elected the governor's uh, uh, preferred candidate as well? And who are those that elected Philip Shevo? I think in the coming days we will know who among them are authentic. And I saw the figure. I saw uh, the figures that they are, they are, they are, they are well getting 570 something or so, and Philip Shevo getting one. You will know that when I say it's cosmetic, that is results. And okay. in the coming days, I will not review. You will see, by time we give you the breakdown of those that are voted, you see that it's all an arranged thing. And I'm, I'm surprised at Okay, so you have said that there was a state, the, the national seems to have abdicated its duty. But the returning officer yesterday at the uh, one that was televised was the, or is the current governor of Zamfara State, Dauda Lawal. Uh, he was the one who announced Mr. Aswani Godalo as the uh, candidate of the PDP. In that, and we also saw beside him Senator James Manager. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be a representation? Would you say that someone at the level of a governor can be compromised um, in, in, in a primary setting? Yes, yes. Uh, well, I said, yeah, they can be compromised. Compromise is different from... Compromise can be money-induced. Compromise can be influence. Compromise also can be association uh, the the governor of Zafara will have done solidarity with his colleague governor of Augusta. so when I say compromise that compromise are in different states some are compromised by reducing like, them with uh, money which we have had you know there was this speculation of two million dollars that uh, was given to the national to, to fill the primaries alleged it's not confirmed and so and we know some of these things so there are said some of these things that we are deep in it and we know how it flows so the governor may not be compromised financially but uh, it's a member of the governor's the governor's forum so the, the alliance will be there to maybe uh, uh, to support his colleague uh, to do what he wants to achieve what he wants so, it was a different stage. And you can see, even our opposition party, you can see. So, I think they should not reduce the office of the law, all these primaries and everything. I think going forward, they should. Make so, initially, you had taken objection with the fact that the state organizing committee was the one doing this. And you said the national cannot, cannot abdicate their responsibility. It is the responsibility of the PDP national to organize his primaries. However, you still want it to be a part of the process. If the delegates who were your own supporters, had they been allowed to be a part of this, would it have made this legal? Yeah. If the authentic delegates were in Samuel Obunga Stadium yesterday, of course, all of us would participate in the same venue. But an attempt to make the authentic delegate not participate. It's already uh, whatever comes after such a process is going to be illegal and nobody will accept it. Even in court, it will be thrown away. I think PDP should be extremely careful with Edo. They should be extremely careful. And why I'm saying so is that let us not get to a process where PDP may not even feel the candidate in this election. Because the processes, including that of yesterday, a lot of Issues are, 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 are there that we need to address, which I will not want to speak in public. As I am point, worried, really. I'm really worried that uh, uh, I'm seeing leadership gap in, in the process of the uh, primaries and all these, all these problems. It's something that is really of concern to me. At what point would you say that the delegate controversy was sorted? Because I do recall that when Congress is held, um, we heard that nine out of ten candidates came out to say that, look, the Congresses that held did not represent what happened. And there were huge objections taken with how the governor of um, Enugu State had conducted the Congresses. And I think also the governor of Taraba State, who said to the best of his knowledge, 
those congresses were free and fair. So at, at what point would you say that your own, these delegates who support you emerged and, you know, all the, the complaints that nine out of ten candidate, uh, aspirants had were eventually sorted? Is it, well, I don't want to go deep. The congresses are conducted by His Excellency, the Enugu State Governor, was mild with irregularities. Along the line, we will discover that there are still men and women of integrity that refuse to be compromised during that Congress. If you go to PTP National Secretariat this morning, you will, go, you will see the authentic delegates list being pasted in front of the PDP Secretariat. The court has asked that those lists be published. The National Working Committee, through its agent, refused to publish those particular results until the court has asked them now to publish it. And they have been pasted in front of the uh, office of the National Secretary. And we are discovering all that has happened. Maybe some of them did not, let me, some of them have the integrity, and maybe some of them, you know, whatever they needed to put them, we didn't, we didn't get to them. You cannot have a result where one person will sign 192 words. You cannot have such result. Now, the real result is now out, where uh, the officials that are meant to conduct the primary sign those results, original results, counterfeit. Now, they are already shocked when those results came out uh, a day before the primary. They are shocked. And they are, they, they are taken aback. There are a lot of things that are going on that I won't tell, I won't say in public. But as we move on, Malque, you will see that the, the, the primaries that took place yesterday will make it legal and constitutional and the authentic is because those that are supposed to be those to vote voted the primaries that and those are the delegates that won their primaries during the Congress in their various wards. Mm. You know, we've heard you say that you're not desperate to, to be governor of Edo State, but at the same no, time, no. If that process that was televised had gone your way, you would not have done this other one, would you? If the delegates, first, if the process from when a new governor came and the, if, all the processes follow our rules and regulation, and I will be in that stadium, if I win, fine. If I don't win, I will congratulate the winner and work with the winner. I'm, I'm somebody that I'm a team player. Even the government knows I'm a team player. And I'm loyal to friendship and loyal to my work. I am somebody that believes in team play and team work. And that is why nine of us, nine of us insisted that the processes must be followed. And there are issues with these processes. Why? Because we want PDP to have a candidate. I want PDP to produce one of us, and all of us, we follow that uh, person. And we consist, we are consistent about it. So, uh, Timberley, you cannot have nine persons saying one thing against one, and that one is right against the other nine. It doesn't make any sense. But it turns so, out yes. that all nine of them were not in the primary that you said that you won. Uh, Chimbley, I won't tell you what we have agreed and what we do. Those that went to the primary, there are reasons for going there. By the time this process is start, know that even those that went to the stadium, mm. there was a reason for they are going to the stadium. And we were part of the reason why they went there. Oh, but Mr. Godalo says he's going to reach out to everybody, perhaps including yourself. So if he does reach out, first of all, has he reached out to you yet? Uh, Chamberlain, you see, democracy is all about inclusion. Democracy is about uh, respect. I, the winner of these primaries, I've already sent my team. I'm sure by now they will have reached out. They told me that uh, Igodaro was uh, granting an interview. I've sent a message that I want to see him so that he can join me. Uh, I already have the other eight, uh, eight, eight persons. They, we are going to be having a meeting this morning. How they will support me. First, I need to bring on board Nice Godalo. And I've sent a message to him. And I was, the, I got that he was a rice television program that 
they will uh, they cannot reach. Uh, so I am already reaching out to him. Join me so that we work together because I am the authentic candidate. And as we move on, you will realize that. So I want to play a role now of bringing everybody together. And I'm also using the medium to appeal to the governor. He has said that whoever wins among all of us, said that whoever wins among all of us, said that whoever wins among all of us. Well, you know, Your Excellency, it's interesting that you mentioned the governor um, just now because that's the first question on my list to ask you. At this moment, what's your relationship with the governor like? Yeah, the governor, the governor remains my senior brother, senior to me with plenty of years, my senior brother and uh, my boss. That is where it is. Uh, he has not been happy that... Uh, what is candidate is my right to contest an election, and I'm exercising that right. And they have done a lot of uh, negative things. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I see it as politics. Uh, but what is, is that I am I made up my mind. I am of I will respect the office of the governor, and I will continue to respect the office of the governor hmm. till the end, whether yeah. as deputy or as any other. So the relationship. It's not cool there. I can tell you that. But it's not from my own end. It's from his own end. Because I've made attempts to, to reach the gap. It doesn't allow it. I've called him more than 100 times. It doesn't take. Even in public function, I don't think it does. So, because I have made up my mind that I must exercise my rights. We don't have any differences. We never had any problem. The only problem we had is why are you protesting? You must not protest. I have a good dialogue that I want to bring. And for me, uh, he has the right to support a good dialogue, but I also have the right to contest. And that right is what I'm exercising. And this right, really, is not out of desperation by me. I insist. My people insisted that they need a, an home board. They don't need an outsider again. And the word on the line, they don't need an outsider. They need somebody that they can feel, they can touch, somebody that understands them. And that yeah. they don't want to have an outsider. Well, uh, Your Excellency, and, and, and the word you consistent, what that is consistent, mm. an outsider. They see Igudaro as an outsider. Okay, but you know there are those who would also argue that perhaps you know this tiff that you have with the governor may have cost you some political capital. Would you say that that has happened? That you know this. Um, issue that you said is between you and the governor has cost you any political capital? Can you hear me, Your Excellency? Okay, well, we definitely be getting, uh, getting him back to uh, continue that conversation. Well, the, the con okay. Your Excellency, are you back with us? Yes, I'm back. Okay. The people are not happy. Yeah, the people are not happy that the governor relocated the office of the deputy governor to Panofsky. People are not happy that why it's money the governor because the deputy governor is going to elect a stop funding uh, a constitutional office. People are not happy that he relocated us out of the chapel uh, and, and arrest and order the arrest of the uh, Catholics to the church. Uh, people are not happy about all those things. And the people are insisting that, Philip, you must contest this. You must. You can see how these delegates, you can see in their numbers, came to my house and barricaded my gate yesterday. Even with the gunshot, they were shooting, shooting the uh, um, uh, vigilantes were ordered to shoot aside. The deputy uh, uh, state leader and the former vice chairman of uh, APC that the camp alongside the governor was shot yesterday, was shot by this man of the vigilante. And okay. it's also, in, we need to have a conversation on how state police mm. should be, uh, 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 policy should be implemented. We need to have a conversation. Well, I am that, an advocate that's definitely... of state police, but with what happened yesterday, we yeah. need to look at it deeply. Mm. Okay, Your Excellency, uh, you know you, you, when you talk about you know you know your relationship with the governor and the fact that you know you are exercising your rights and of course rightfully so, but a number of people would also wonder, hey, you've worked together, you literally 
sacrificed a lot of your political capital for the governor to become, you know, the governor and all of those things. There are those who would say that. There are those who would also say you had your interests all the while. So having had all of that conversation, having had that kind of relationship, why do you think the governor, you know, is not in support of your aspiration? Well, I, I really don't know. You see, uh, a, a leader, a, I as a leader, I have issues, have a problem. Feel, uh, I need to recognize the problem. The first thing I would do is to call my team and look, call my team and say, look, this is my thought. You go and find a way this thing can work or give me your thoughts. Please. And we all sit down, everybody go find his own way of seeing how things can be done. If the governor actually uh, was to play his role as the leader that he is, there have been a conversation where, look, I think uh, we need to move this. The next governorship of the state, let's move it to a, a decent trial. And I think this is a reason why I feel we should move to a decent All of us, when I start thinking towards that and bringing our own ideas, some that are not interested, some that, but there must be a conversation where all of us, when I say this is the direction and this is the direction. Not for somebody to come and say, look, I'm interested in X, that you cannot contest, uh, and this is the thing that must be. And all the government funding, all the government machineries, everything. And that. You can still do the same if you have that conversation. And one of those people that are in that conversation refuses to follow. You allow the person. And you can still pull your weight behind whoever you feel you want to support. Oshomole did that. When Oshomole was the governor of the state, he wanted Obasi as the governor. Some of us, including me, felt the president SSG should be the governor. And Oshimole persuaded, had conversation, had meetings. For over three months, he was having sales meetings, different things on why he feels Obasuke is better. And I was convinced at the end of the day. And we had to now speak to this SSG, the president SSG, and said, I think Oshimole is right. Uh, Economy, we need this, we need that. And that was how we all now had to collapse our structure to bring in Obaseke as the government. If you have the same interest, that is the way to go. You persuade. Policy is about persuasion. Policy is about inclusion. Politics is not... Uh, 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 it, 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 if Politics is not where you just come and say, this is, it must be like this, and if you don't go, get out. Mm. But your excellency <laughs> Okay. Well we'll definitely get that connection back and then we'll we'll continue the conversation. In about five minutes or thereabouts we'll be going for the business news. <laughs> not but, um, so who are okay. you? Politics, okay. you can't tell anybody that this election is concerned, my brother. Mm. Okay. Well just one more one or two yes, other things. Question. Now that this is where we are, and I think Mark well asked you a similar question the other time, and you've been talking about the courts. According to media reports, in fact, I think the front, one of the stories on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper, well, the Daily Trust newspaper has it that Edo Governorship, Igodalo, Shwaibu emerge winners in PDP parallel primaries. That's what the papers are saying. As far as the world is concerned, there are two PDP governorship primary uh, PDP governorship flag bearers in Edo State at this moment. What are the options before you? Should the court say it's not you? No, let me just ask you straight away. Now the world believes that there are two of you. What are the options before you? Because there's only one person whose name can be on the ballot as per INEC. Yeah, the option is for the PDP not to uh, go and argue against my candidate. But if they do that, PDP will lose a boost. Because Edo people will not want as well the Daro to be the governor, the governor of the state because he is not homeboy they are looking. 
they are looking for somebody that they know, somebody they can feel, somebody they can touch. That is the question. And PDP have a date with issue. Delegates have spoken that will And I can bet you the other eight aspirants will support the Shaibo if the party that way. If the party decides to join us in court to argue for a development, then the PDP be, uh, uh, winning a dose for PDP will be shaken because Asper will not be accepted. Eight. People. Have the other eight openly said they are supporting you now? Don't, don't worry about that. There are a lot of things that are going on on the plan. So I, I am the grassroots politician. I am. Uh, but you're telling us, people, like people need to know where, where they stand. I mean, so that they can they know. I mean, so that they can know where to run and how to go, how know. to report these stories. There's a lot of things that we can't say now because the change is hot, and there are certain things I cannot tell you now uh, because if I say it, they will understand my strategy. Oh, but I know you don't want to waste money. Why are you going to go on and campaign as the candidate of the PDP? Uh, I'm the candidate of PDP. I'm the candidate. And I have all the instrumental, uh, instrumentality to complain. And all my offices are already in all the 18 local. I have 19 offices in the industry. Two in Oredo and one in each in all the uh, uh, local. Mm. I am I'm prepared. I'm ready. For, and my... Um, my, yes, yes. Okay, the, the connection was just uh, a bit challenging. But just before we go, for, for those who have listened to you over time and even this morning, they may just wonder, well, when you say, I mean, when they read and hear about this feud between yourself and the governor, is it because they didn't support you that you say he's not on your side. Is there any specific thing that he did that you that gave you cause to say he is he's op directly opposing your candidacy? Yes, yes. Uh, all the vehicles that Aswe is using, apart from one, they are all government vehicles. Our mega bus have been changed to Aswe Dalok vehicles. All the security apparatus that is using are all government house security apparatus. All the facility, or even funding is from the government. You have records so, of the so funding? I am in government house, don't forget. Oh. And yeah. I am in government, I am in the government of Edmonton, don't forget that. So there's no, and I, 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 I have been in the system. I, I, I was majority leader. A member of the Justice Assembly for eight years. And I'm deputy governor now for seven years. So you know, I understand everybody, all the people in the system know them. And there's nothing that takes place in government that I don't know. Even when I've been shut out of government, uh, people that work in government have not been shut out. All right. Um your Excellency, Deputy Governor of Edo State, uh, following that primaries, you say you are, you are the candidate of the People's Democratic Party for the primaries and ahead of the elections. We well, thank you for coming on this morning, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And by the grace of God, uh, don't worry, uh, we will get everybody on board, including us, uh, uh, all of us together. I will need your advice as far as the main is concerned. And I want to thank you for having me out for action. Ayo. Ayo, thank you very much. All right.